Welcome back to Bailey Built. Uh, this episode, I'm going to be installing a new transmission. We're getting rid of the Turbo 400 transmission, and I'm going to install a 4L80E electronic transmission. Unfortunately, uh, all the video footage uh, did not capture any of the audio, so I'm going to have to narrate this video. So bear with me, and uh, I hope you like the content. Okay, so basically I ordered a 4L80E transmission. Uh, the transmission I purchased through Summit Racing, it's a B&M transmission. Uh, B&M is owned by Holly, and uh, they offer a, basically a rebuilt uh, transmission. So uh, they'll get a core, they'll gut it, and they'll put new parts inside where needed, and it comes obviously finished. Um, you know, they warranty their stuff. And uh, that's what I ended up choosing. This is basically um, like a factory replacement, like a rebuilt new factory replacement um, transmission. And that's really what I wanted to install in the truck. I didn't go for like a level three or a level two type of transmission. Overall, I do like how it how it showed up. Um, the exterior finish looked great. Um, very happy to get this thing it does not come with the torque converter it does not come with the uh the yoke um it doesn't come with any kind of wiring harness or anything like that um it is basically just a plug and play transmission so anything everything else you're gonna have to get it's just got a serial number on it and um you know, these are great transmissions um, ultimately, I didn't really want uh, to just run a three-speed transmission in this truck. I ended up changing my mind. If you if you have a three-speed transmission, you know that if you're going anywhere above 65 miles an hour on the freeway, you know your RPMs on your vehicle seem to be real, real, real high. So I elected for that four the, that four speed, that fourth gear. So that way, I'm on the freeway doing 70 miles an hour. My engine is purring down the road, and that's one of the big deciding factors on why I changed my mind. Um, everything looks good. You know, the pump here uh, all looks real beautiful. You can see uh, right there I'm pointing at the, the holes for the dowel pins. Uh, those dowel pins are going to line up with my big block 454. And uh, so were all the bolt holes, except for the one that's at 12 o'clock. So on the transmission, there's a bolt hole at the very top. That I don't have on my uh, engine. That would have been on a later model engine. So my engine's a uh, Mark IV, big block, 454. Um, so it all does fit. Uh, everything does line up, but just I won't be using that top hole. And uh, that's just what it's going to be. And it's going to be four inches longer. Okay, so next up, I basically ordered uh, everything that I thought I needed to install this transmission. I you know, ordered, you know, all the fluid and all the parts, uh, everything I got through Summit Racing. So the transmission I bought through Summit Racing and every part uh, that I needed to install this thing, I bought through Summit Racing. And they were a big help. You know, they helped me out. I called them up. Uh, they helped me pick out the parts I needed. And we ordered, I ordered this stuff over the phone with the help of a technician. So right here, we're looking at um, the 90 degree fittings. I wanted to put these on uh, the transmission, so that my, uh, my fluid lines were pointing downwards and not coming directly off the side of the transmission. You know, my cab sits on top of there. I got a transmission tunnel and I was concerned about clearances. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put those 90, uh, 90 adapters, uh, 90 degree adapters, uh, just to help the situation. Right here, I'm opening up an adjustable transmission mount. Since the transmission is four inches longer than my Turbo 400 that's in there now, um, I needed to solve the issue of uh, relocating the transmission cross member uh, back about three to four inches. And I think this thing is gonna help me out. It ended up being a lifesaver. Here we go, here's a couple more fittings. It's the same thing, it's for the transmission side of the fluid lines. And uh, basically uh, those two are going to basically bolt up into the transmission and then I'll have those 90 degree fittings that will um, attach onto those afterwards. Next up, I've got the uh, transmission fluid. Since it's a B&M transmission, I chose to get the B&M 
transmission fluid. They have this synthetic trick shift stuff. And uh, I know about this because I was watching a YouTube channel, Hoonigan, and they built a merch truck. And in that episode, they used a B&M transmission uh, made by Holly. And they also purchased a few other things, including this um, synthetic trick shift fluid. So I uh, basically purchased what uh, I seen in the video. And uh, I did like, you know, that uh, they abused that transmission and it was everything they wanted it to do. Here's the bolts that bolt my flex plate up to the torque converter that I ordered for this. Uh, those uh, I ended up returning. The torque converter didn't, didn't fit. Uh, it didn't fit up right. It wasn't the right one. So those bolts got returned with the torque converter, which I'll show you here soon. This right here is a dipstick that I ordered for it. Um, as you can see, this dipstick is really, really, really short. When that dipstick is in the transmission, it barely comes up just behind the passenger valve cover. Uh, the way that the little bracket is and where it's supposed to mount to, none of that really worked for my application. So I don't know what application this fits, but it certainly didn't work for mine. So I ended up returning that. I did get a different one and it was a low car dipstick. Uh, the dipstick I got is a lot longer and it's got a bracket that's basically gonna bolt up to my firewall. Um, that part number is LOK-TD34L80FM36. That's the dipstick that I ended up exchanging for. All right, so here's another Summit Racing box. I think the last part that I had ordered uh, this is going to be the uh, torque converter. Uh, when I was on the phone with uh, Summer Racing, um, I basically, uh, you know, we went over torque converter options. This is going to be your budget-friendly option. I want to say this was $350, $400 torque converter. The brand of this one is uh, Boss Hog, and it's designed for the 4L80E transmission, um, which it did fit the transmission. It just didn't fit my, uh, my flex plate. It's heavy. <laughs> it's a heavy. It's a heavy torque converter. So here we go. I'm just gonna open it up, and as you can see, it's shiny new. It's getting better than that. So now with all the parts on hand, um, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, attempt to install this uh, this transmission. So uh, first things first, uh, I've gotta basically, you know, get blocks set up, um, cause my, my truck's on airbags. So I gotta get blocks to support the frame. I need to get blocks and, you know, all kinds of things to support the motor um, without the transmission, cause I'm gonna basically be changing that out. So. I did spend some time doing that. There wasn't really a whole lot of rocket science to that. I did it safely and uh, was able to, you know, basically take off the transmission with no problems. Unfortunately, um, when I did all that, I put the new Boss Hog torque converter on, put the whole transmission, the new transmission on, and found out that the uh, that the torque converter did not line up um, with the mounting holes of my flex plate. And uh, the real problem is it's like, there's not another flex plate that I could really get. It's not a flex plate issue. It truly is a torque converter issue. So I'm basically just pointing out the fact right now that uh, you know the holes didn't line up. There's six holes in my flex plate and none of the holes on the torque converter uh, line up with any of the holes on my flex plate. So called up Summit Racing they uh, got a new guy on the phone and he knew right away, that's the wrong torque converter. Um, so they had a, they did have a torque converter that was for me. They had it on the shelf and they uh, basically, if I wanted to get this done today, I would have had to drive up there. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm getting all the parts together that, uh, that I need to return and I'm gonna drive up to Summit Racing and I'm gonna get the correct parts. So if you don't know, uh, it's about a three and a half hour drive, um, one one direction from my house to uh, Reno, Nevada. So not only do I got a problem with parts, I got a long drive ahead. I spilt transmission fluid all over my garage when I had to take the transmission back off the uh, motor and uh, obviously set it down on the ground. So Summit Racing did get me fixed up 
and I ended up getting a uh, TCI torque converter. Uh, the part number is TCI-242900. Uh, it's got a stall speed of uh, 2000 RPM and it was somewhere in the neighborhood of $600. So, and again, extremely heavy. I made sure that Summit Racing um, got my flex plate um, out of their inventory. I had bought my flex plate from Summit earlier. So while I was up there, I had them get the flex plate out, um, get a, a flex plate out of their inventory. And we actually put it on this uh, torque converter at the counter to make sure that, uh, you know, I don't waste another trip, come back up to fix the problem. Made sure absolutely that it worked. Funny thing is um, when we did all that, we actually kind of noticed something. Apparently on my flex plate, there's total six holes. Three of them are a bolt pattern A, and the other three are like a bolt pattern B. If you pause the video and look closely, you'll see that three of the holes are closer to the outer teeth, and there's three holes that are, uh, you know, further away from the teeth. So the three holes that are really close to the teeth are the ones that are going to line up to three holes on this torque converter, and I'm holding the bolts right now that are going to uh, basically do that. So right now I'm just talking about what we need to do, getting it done. What I did is I made a template. You know, that torque converter is so heavy to grab it, pick it up, walk it over to the to the block to find the three holes that are all going to line up. I made a template and I just marked all the holes on the torque converter and then walked it over to uh, the flex plate and then with a Sharpie just circled the holes uh, that I need to uh, utilize. So that way when I put the transmission on and I crawl underneath the truck and we start to spin the motor, I can basically get to my bolt holes real easy. There's no real confusion on what we're doing, right? You can see here, we're going marking them. Those three holes are the ones I'm going to use. By the way, if you do this, you got to make sure you put the Sharpie mark on the other side because you're not going to see this once the transmission's on. Um, I did both sides, but just for this YouTube video, I did circle uh, this side right there. But you know, when you get underneath the truck and you're trying to line up all your holes, uh, if you're trying to, you need to put a Sharpie mark on the other side of the uh, flex plate. Uh, that way you know what you're aiming for, um, which is gonna be a big help because you gotta turn the motor by hand um, to obviously get to the next hole. And uh, that's pretty much what I did. Pretty exciting stuff. Okay, so uh, I had someone help me out. That person really didn't want to be on camera, so I didn't film the installation of it. But what I had did is I took the torque converter and I put, I think, uh, two quarts of that trick shift fluid into it. I just filled up the torque converter. We slid the torque converter on. There's about three clicks and that torque converter is how you know it's all the way seated. So there's some wiggling, there's some turning and there's some little bit of pushing. And I was able to successfully get it seated all the way on to the pump. Um, then we put the transmission on, bolted it up. I got underneath there. There's a, a tolerance. You don't want, because the, the, the torque converter is gonna slide forward and touch the flex plate. And whatever that gap is, you got to make sure that gap's not too much or too little. So I had the right amount of gap. The torque converter, I mean, it went forward just a little bit. Boom. It's It uh, made contact with the flex plate. And then I just started my bolts. Spun the, spun the motor, started all my bolts, and then spun it again and went to every bolt and torqued them all down. Right now you're seeing the... Uh, you know, the distance, the, the difference between the Turbo 400 where it mounted on the cross member and where uh, the new 4L80E now needs to uh, mount to. And I think that's about something like three to four inches is the, is the difference right there. So right here, the idea is to just take that transmission cross member, rotate it 180 degrees, and then we're gonna use that adjustable transmission mount that's sitting on the ground right there. And we're gonna use that, um, and that way I don't have to do any other welding, cutting, I don't have to drill any other holes. We just gotta turn that transmission cross member around and use that uh, adjustable mount, which worked out great. I thought I was gonna have to do a bunch of surgery because uh, I had welded plates uh, gussets, you know, onto the, uh, onto my frame, um, to add additional support for that transmission cross member. 
Okay, just to wrap up this video, like I said, I was able to take the transmission cross member, just rotate it 180 degrees. This adjustable transmission mount worked out great and I was actually able to uh, get the new transmission right where it needs to be mounted at. And it worked out great. I didn't have to do any more cutting, drilling holes. So uh, I'd say I lucked out on that pretty, pretty good. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you find this content interesting. Stay tuned. I got a lot more videos coming out.